So President Trump held a press conference uh, yesterday about the violence in Charlottesville perpetrated by white supremacists. Now, these are people, of course, who are literally neo-Nazis, uh, like the guy who killed Heather, Heather Heyer. Now, remember, I, I talked about who this guy was, and I'm not going to say his name, but you know, once was enough. Um, the guy who ran over Heather Heyer was somebody who had once gone to the Dachau uh, concentration camp and had said, Ooh, hey, this is where the magic happens. That magic, of course, being the deaths of millions of Jewish people. Okay, so look, that's a pretty fucking sick guy, right? So on Saturday, um, Trump had originally said that it was the fault of many sides. I, I, actually, I want to show you that. Then I want to show you what he said at this uh, t uh, today or uh, at yesterday's press conference. Let's take a look. But we're closely following the terrible events unfolding in Charlottesville, Virginia. We condemn in the strongest possible terms this egregious display of hatred, bigotry, and violence on many sides. On many sides. Okay, so many, many sides, right? Many sides. So a couple of days uh, go by, and he's like, well, you know, uh, I, we condemn the white, I, I condemn the white supremacists in the KKK, obviously. But check out what he said yesterday about the violence. Define alt-right to me. You define it. Go ahead. Well, I'm saying, as no, Senator, define it for me. Come on, let's go. Define Senator it Senator McCain defined them as the same group. Okay, what about the alt-left that came United charging at Excuse me. What about the alt-left that came charging at the, as you say, the alt-right? Do they have any semblance of guilt? This is Senator what, let, let me ask you this. What about the fact they came charging, that they came charging with clubs in their hands, swinging clubs? Do they have any problem? I think they do. Sorry. So, you know, as far as I'm concerned, that was a horrible, horrible day. Wait a minute. I'm not finished. I'm not finished, fake news. That was a horrible day. I, I will tell you something. I watched those very closely, much more closely than you people watched it. And you have, uh, you, you had a group on one side that was bad, and you had a group on the other side that was also very violent. And nobody wants to say that, but I'll say it right now. You had a group, you had a group on the other side that came charging in without a permit, and they were very, very violent. Okay. So, uh, no, there was blame on both sides. What about the alt-left? What about the alt-left? What about it? Well, first off, there is no alt-left. That's a bullshit made-up term created by centrists to attack progressives and equate them with the alt-right. And second of all, what you're doing is you're equivocating literal Nazis with the counter-protesters. And that's the whole point of this, right? Uh, both sides, equal to blame. They were violent. Oh, and you know what? They didn't have a, they didn't have a permit. No, they're not equal to blame. For one, there's a video of a literal Nazi murdering a young woman who was not engaging in violence. Okay? And there was also a group of white supremacists that nearly beat a black man to death who was a protester or counter-protester. And that was DeAndre Harris, right? He was literally attacked by white supremacist thugs wielding weapons, beaten to nearly an inch of his life. He said that if his friends weren't there and hadn't noticed that he was missing, he would be dead right now. He said, me and five, about five of my friends were out protesting without the racists had left. But at one point they came back. Everyone is exchanging words with the group. But then the KKK and white supremacists just rushed us. Harris told the root in an interview. He said, they're beating me with poles. I have eight, I have eight staples in my head a broken wrist, and a chipped tooth. Now you tell me, uh, who seemed to be the violent one in both of those circumstances? In both of those instances. Look, what this is, is that this is bullshit false equivalence. And you know what else it is? It's also a giant fucking neon sign that says, hey, white supremacists, keep doing what you're doing, man. Go ahead and do your thing. You know why? Because I'm also going to blame, if anything happens... I'm going to blame Antifa, and I'm going to blame Black Lives Matter. I'm going to tell, say that the protesters are just as bad as you. And look, I personally disagree with the tactics of Antifa because I'm a pacifist, right? So if you're a pacifist, you don't believe in violence, then you're not going to believe in people, uh, in the tactics of people who occasionally like to employ violence. But 
on the same side, on the, or I should say on the other hand, Antifa is going against people who literally believe that blacks and Jews should be murdered. If I had to pick a side, I'd pick Antifa. There's no equivocating, though, uh, Antifa and these protesters with people who literally think that Jews and blacks do not deserve to live. Now, one more reason, of course, is that these white supremacists, they came ready for a fight. They had shields and helmets and, you know, gear. Some of them even brought guns. Now, this is according to firsthand uh, 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 people who were there, okay? Firsthand experience of what happened. And they talked to a couple of people, the LA Times did. Uh, and, well, I'm going to give you some of their accounts. First of all, was uh, BuzzFeed reporter Blake Montgomery. Now, he said that most white supremacists and Nazi groups arrived armed like a paramilitary force, carrying shields, protective gear, rods, and yes, lots of guns, utilizing Virginia's loose firearm laws. They used militarized defensive maneuvers, shouting commands at one another to move forward or retreat, and would form a line of shields or phalanx. It's like they watched 300 a few times to gain ground or shepherd some through the projectiles. It seems that they had practice for this. Now, of course, towards projectiles, I'm not going to deny that counter-protesters threw stuff at the Nazis. Okay. Yes, they did. Again, does that equivocate? No. Here's uh, Jordan Green of The Nation. He wrote that a family of black helmeted white supremacists, members of the traditionalist working P Workers Party, Identity of Ropa, American Vanguard, and other hate warriors, commanded the steps at the southeast corner of the park, repelling attempted incursions by wobblies, communists, and a multiracial cast of irregulars eager to fight back. Water bottles and other projectiles flew in both directions, while police tear gas canisters thudded into adjacent parking lots, often lobbed back into the park by plucky leftists. So, uh, of course, look, yes, you had both sides that were fighting each other, but who's here to instigate? I'm guessing that the people that came in that were waving Confederate and Nazi flags were the ones coming in to instigate this entire thing. These were protests, and then the counter-protesters came in, and of course you had violence. But again, you had one side that was clearly coming in to instigate and re was looking for a fight, and he was ready. It's not the same. They practiced for this. They were here to antagonize people, and congratulations. That's what happened. And even one of them happened to have murdered someone. And they're not the same. And if you believe that these two groups are the same, that there is an equivalence here, then you, sir, are, or, or madam, are part of the problem. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching this video. If you want to see more like this, please hit the subscribe button below. And if you want to support truly independent progressive media, please consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash TYTNation.